Amber Heard and Meghan Markle share strong narcissistic traits, and their body language and behavior reveal the subtle tactics that they both might use to control their partners. From hidden clues in Johnny's body language that showed he may actually have been scared and nervous around Amber, to Harry's telltale signs that he lets Meghan dominate him. Both Amber and Meghan seem to use the same nonverbal tricks to manipulate their partners into confirming their own lies. First, let's study Johnny and Prince Harry's anxious behavior when around Amber and Meghan to see clear signs of the control these women have. Watch how Johnny almost constantly has his chin tucked in and deliberately tries to keep distance between him and Amber. It could be a sign that he feels threatened. Did you notice his heavy, anxious breathing, looking down and away, and avoiding eye contact with Amber? As well as when he's looking down and away, he's sucking on his finger to pacify his distress. Johnny also looks at Amber first before answering questions. This tells us that he could feel insecure around her. But pay close attention to Amber's forced smile. See how it looks fake? Remember it, because we will get back to it. Now, look at this awkward instance between Meghan and Harry, where he looks just as uncomfortable and on edge as Johnny did. Especially, pay close attention to their thumb war. But Meghan is still fighting for that outside dominance. She's still driven, she's still triggered to dominate Prince Harry. And watch Harry's nervous body language as soon as she submits. That nervous look on his face, biting his lips, and his restless right leg are all clues that Harry immediately regretted fighting against Meghan's persistent control. He's already thinking of the repercussions. He's panicking now about what's going to come when they get back into their private room about him trying to dominate that situation. But dominating and controlling their partners is not the only thing narcissists do. Part of their controlling behavior is to silence their partners. Amber and Meghan both showed signs of this. I was sort of not allowed to be right, not allowed to have a voice. And we've seen countless examples of how Meghan rudely interrupts Harry or just shuts him up completely, like here. Can you imagine how little sense that makes? And our plan was to do this forever. For us, yeah, for us forever. Our plan for, for me, I mean, I wrote letters to his family when I got there saying, I am dedicated to this. What Meghan did here was to not only interrupt Harry, but to completely start her sentence again from the beginning. That is also typical of narcissists. But that's what people do when they want their point to be very well understood and they want to shut somebody else up. There's more narcissistic behaviors both these women display. Narcissists also want their partners to be dependent on them. One way to do this is to isolate them from the world. Narcissists will stop at nothing to separate their partners or their victims from friends and family. In Johnny and Amber's court case, Johnny gave a heartbreaking testimony about how Amber tried to ruin his relationship with his kids. My kids are far more intelligent than I am, and they, they broke. They wouldn't be around Ms. Heard any, they refused to be around her <clears throat> anymore. And it is no secret that royal critics blame Meghan for causing the massive rift between Harry and his family. Harry's relationship with his family is so bad now that it doesn't look like there can ever be peace again. It seems that Amber and Meghan are both so controlling that they'll even take on the mother role over their partners. So at a certain point, what enters your mind is you start to slowly realize that you are in a relationship with your mother, in a sense. And we see literal examples of how Meg treats Harry like a kid. Like at this polo event, where she once again managed to shamelessly squeeze herself into the spotlight. Watch here how she wipes lipstick from Harry's face, just like a mom would do with her child. This was after the couple shared a kiss on stage. But even the way Megan pushes and directs Harry has a strong motherly touch to it. And one more thing about that kiss. Notice how Meghan has her hand covering Harry's face? This may be another narcissistic trick for Meghan to get all the focus on herself. When kissing for the camera, cover the face of the other person so you will be the focus. Also, show off your new jewelry. 
If Megan really did it on purpose, surely no one else would be that desperate to steal the spotlight from their spouse, right? Or maybe Amber might. That's another narcissistic trait they both display. The need to be the absolute center of attention. That brings us back to Amber's fake smile. Here's one of the best examples of it. When everyone cheers Johnny at her premiere, narcissists can stand not being the most important person. The disgust in Amber's face is clear. But check out Megan's disgust when straight up told she is not the most important person. You're not the only powerful woman even in this, in this community. The first thing Megan does is something called reframing. This is when she brushes her hair out of her face. Her rapid blinking is another clue that she's offended. This is called eye blocking. According to behavioral expert Bruce Durham, it literally means Megan is trying to block the interviewer with her eyes. As much as narcissists don't like not getting all the attention, they absolutely love being showered in compliments. And we see it with Amber and Megan also. Blink and you'll miss it, but watch Amber's reaction closely when Jimmy Fallon gives her a compliment. Gorgeous here on the cover of uh, this magazine. Did you catch all the body language cues? Let's have an expert lay it out for us. Immediately when Jimmy says gorgeous, Amber's eyes widen in extreme interest. Her mouth opens in what seems to be her breath being taken away. She's rocking back and forth in her chair with eagerness to hear the compliment. She flicks her tongue out, but seems to be pressing it against the upper level of her teeth, and then also clasps her hands together in all what appears to be self-restraint. Now, watch Megan's similar reaction in this 27 interview when she gets a compliment from Craig Ferguson. Again, blink and you'll miss it. Wow, you look sensational. Thank you so Is much. that one of them swanky designer dresses? I got all dolled up for you. Megan shows the same bubbly, overexcited movement as she can't seem to keep her body still. She also has that grin that seems sort of unnatural and she tensely clenches her hands similar to how Amber had to clasp her own hands together. In both cases, it just looks like they are trying too hard. Uh, uh, uh. Both have also been accused in the press and on social media for either twisting the truth or flat out lying to either make themselves look good or look the victim. I'm not a a good victim, I get it. I'm not a likable victim. I'm not a perfect victim. And it's no different for Megan, who constantly complains about how bad royal life was and how unfair she was treated by the royal family and palace staff. She, she likes playing the victim. The moment she arrived in the royal household, she's been belly aching about being a victim. What I saw was a sense of, I am a victim. Look at me as a victim. This is also very much in tune with narcissism. Because another thing narcissists love to do is to turn any accusation against them around and to blame it on someone else. And we all know what happened in Johnny and Amber's court case, where she accused him of all sorts of horrible things. Yet the jury believed that it was the other way around, that Amber was actually the aggressor and Johnny the victim. Just like the infamous case between Meghan and Kate Middleton, when headlines said Meghan made Kate cry at Meghan's wedding. Did you make Kate cry? No, the reverse happened. Meghan flipped the story around and pinned the blame on Kate. But body language experts are not convinced. Pay close attention to Meghan's smirk and how the left corner of her lip pulls slightly up. Experts call this duping delight, and it is typical of narcissists when they tell a lie and believe they got away with it. But more importantly, when the memory brings them joy. And then I think we're seeing actually a duping delight. Then we see a contempt right there on the left side of her mouth. She does a little smile, and we see just a little bit too much on the left goes up. I don't believe that, that, the, that uh, who's a Kate made her cry. And in interviews and in Amber's court testimonies, we saw countless examples of this duping delight. But here, we see it almost continuously. You ever no. punch Johnny Depp with a closed fist in the history of your relationship with John? Another way they both seem to avoid the truth in interviews is to speak in metaphors and to give long, elaborate answers that in the end don't actually say anything at all, as if dodging the actual question. 
It is a narcissistic playbook tool that both Megan and Amber have used. Toxic personalities. Purposefully talk in complicated and messy ways. Like when Amber testified in court, Johnny's lawyers constantly had to pull Amber back to the question, and she just seemed to rant on and on and on. No, of Ms. Herman, $7 that's, million that's not my to charity, and I, f Ms. I Heard, intend to Ms. fulfill Heard, those obligations. Heard, that's not my question. Please, what try was your to question? answer my question. And Megan has been seen doing the same in interviews, like when she accused the royal family of racial remarks but refused to say what was said or who said it. Another chapter from the narcissist playbook is how they control their partners into taking their side, even if their partners don't agree with them. One example was when Amber faced serious charges in Australia after deliberately smuggling her dogs into the country and tried blaming everyone else for her misdeeds. And she even forced Johnny to take part of the blame, even though it turned out he had nothing to do with it. But watch how she manipulated him in their apology statement. Amber is leaning towards him, like she's looking for support. Even if Johnny accepted to apologize, his body is just a bit facing away from her. Clearly, Johnny felt very uncomfortable and looked almost forced and coerced. Meg used the same trick on Harry when telling this blatant lie. Three days before our wedding, we got married. Ah. No one knows that. We now know that they did not get married before the wedding. But watch how Meghan forces Harry to comply with the lie. She makes eye contact with Harry and gestures back and forth to him with her hand and forces his approval by nodding her head. What's really important here is how Harry turns away from Meghan and looks down. There is no positive engagement, there is no affirmation, there is no acknowledgement, there is no agreement from Prince Harry. Instead, he does a thing called disengagement. I'm removing myself from the situation. Then there's another thing Amber and Meghan have in common when it comes to choosing between lying and telling the truth. When they do tell the truth, it is their truth. How do you feel about the palace hearing you speak your truth today? I have the right to tell my story. I have a right to own my story and my truth. But the problem with their truth is that it is not necessarily the truth. And it is really the truth that matters, not someone's personal perception of it. They both also love sharing their truth, and they both feel they are a voice for voiceless women. I selfishly found relief in being able to use what I've lived through to bring light to these issues, to give a voice to people who don't have the voice. We've also heard similar sentiments from Megan about speaking up and being a voice for others. If things are wrong and there is a lack of justice and there's an inequality, then someone needs to say something. And why not me? It might seem that part of being a voice for voiceless women is to do lots of publicity stunts, even when it's really inappropriate. Both have also been accused of using tragedies or other people's misfortune for publicity stunts. Like Amber's seemingly fake crying at a charity event where Johnny Depp was actually the guest, but she still managed to steal the spotlight. And Megan's questionable appearance at the mass tragedy in Texas, where she seemingly managed to pose for the cameras still apparently pretending she did not know they were there. Part of publicity stunts is to get the public on their side. Because true to narcissists is that they care very much what people think of them or say about them. But both Megan and Amber will have you believe that they don't care at all. I don't care what one thinks about me. I made the choice to not read anything, positive or negative. However, expert opinions are quite the opposite. Amber says all the time that she doesn't care what people think of her. However, people who say that as often as Amber usually care very much what people think of them. And according to royal biographer Andrew Morton, before Meghan joined the royal family, she was known for trying really hard as an actress to get herself into magazines and tabloids. And she secretly fed information to author Omid Scobie to make herself look good in his book about her and Harry, while putting the royal family in a bad light. Amber and Meghan both have been slammed in the media for using Johnny and Harry for their money and status. Only Amber and Meghan can know if they truly married for love or for personal gain. But a classic trait of the narcissist is to use other people. And they will milk those targets until they no longer serve any purpose. Is it just a coincidence Amber filed for divorce from Johnny around the same time she landed her first major film role? 
Critics also think Meghan only married her first husband, who just happened to be a TV producer, to climb the celebrity ladder and to get into the acting world. But narcissists don't only use their targets to gain opportunities. Maybe it's money or power or much, much better status. Maybe even a title, if you know what I mean. And according to a royal biographer, that's exactly why Meghan set her eyes on Harry. Meghan was on a manhunt and Harry was available and she carefully researched all his strengths and more importantly his weaknesses. There are strong signs that back up this idea. It appears Amber and Meghan used the same methods to attract and then trap and control their spouses. Just compare body language from early in their relationships to all the other examples we've seen so far. Here is one of Amber and Johnny's first ever appearances. Even though Johnny is naturally shy in public, we can see that his body language with Amber is both comfortable and confident. Johnny has his chin up and his chest out, and he holds Amber close to him, clearly very different to later in the relationship. These are all clear signs that Johnny was leading Amber, and more importantly, she was allowing it. He wants to be protective and Amber's body reactions signal that she's okay with being led. We see the same with Meghan and Harry from one of their first public appearances together. Harry has his hand over Meghan's and his arm in front of hers, meaning Meghan is allowing Harry to protect her and lead her. But really important, their fingers are interlocked, and not like we saw later in their marriage with a thumb war. Harry is also physically leading slightly in front of Meghan, and she again seems to be allowing it. Like Johnny's first appearance with Amber, Harry is also upright and confident, and his chest slightly out. Harry and Meghan's steps are also in sync, as their legs move in harmony as they walk, showing that Meghan is not trying to lead or control Harry. Well, not yet, anyway. Because after this, everything changed as we saw. How both Amber and Meghan started to dominate their partners. None of us can know what really goes on behind the scenes for either Amber or Meghan. And no one can know what their relationships are like behind closed doors. Body language clues and behavioral analysis can only give us a small part of the picture. But what do you think of these expert conclusions and behavioral analysis? Are Amber and Meghan both really narcissists? Or do people make too much of their body language and behavior? 